Hello, I'm Roger Bisbee from Skill Builder and I am here with James from Plumber Parts. How's it going, Rog? You recognise James if you watch any of the plumbing videos. He's got hundreds of them out there. And uh, people have actually been saying to us for quite a long time, why don't you guys get together and have a bit of a chin wag and see if you can put some of the world's problems to right. So that's what we're doing today. Yeah, we're not just going to talk about plumbing, are we? I don't we know, We talk mate. about everything. I think we just start and see where it ends well, up. Do you think nowadays customers tend to care less? They care more about what they're pulling out of yeah. their pocket there's huge hypocrisy huge hypocrisy. yeah I mean people are like oh I don't like the work but I don't want to pay for good work so when you get some you of know. these high profile companies that have dodged your taxes you know mm. and then suddenly it's all over the papers go oh don't go to such and such a coffee shop now because they don't pay their taxes <laughs> oh, don't do this and so on coffee shops, you know <laughs> so so we had all that right and everyone's indignant they go oh that's disgusting they should be paying their taxes right yeah, yeah. so I'm going to a house and I say to a person right I'm going to do this job unvented cylinder for you it's going to be whatever plus the vat and they yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, not the fat, please. I don't oh. want to pay the fat. What can I do? You know, can I pay you cash to avoid the fat? So the, the, one day they're criticising... The, the only person shop. who saves in that situation is the person who wants to pay cash. Yeah. That's what gives me the ump. Because yeah. I'll say, look, you know, I've got a mortgage to pay. Mm. This all has to go through. Mm. Otherwise, I don't get offered a mortgage next year. Well, you know, do you know what? whatever there, it is. There comes a point when, when you're working for people who want to save 20% on the VAT, and I don't blame them for that either. Yeah, yeah. You know, I think that's a fault of the system, really, the way it's worked. But if they want to save 20% VAT, I'm thinking, okay, that's fine. So you do a big job. Say you do a loft conversion for them, you know, £30,000 loft conversion, right? And you've, you've been weighed out. You Suddenly you've got £30,000 that you can't spend yeah, yeah. because of the way it is these days. Yeah. You can't keep it under your mattress. You can't put it in a bank. You can't pay your mortgage with it. It takes a while to spend it off down the pub. So, so. yeah, that's all you can do, isn't it? It's just go out and buy toys. But do you think as well, that a customer asking for to knock us for money yeah. is that almost as bad as us well not as bad i mean that's probably not the right word but you know is it is is it the same thing as us going to the supplier going look dave you've bought on the counter you've only given me 35 percent terms on osma or something like that yeah, yeah. can you can you knock me a bit more, more? Yeah. i mean we're effectively knocking them then aren't we yeah. But they're the big faces corporations yeah. that we hate. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think you've got to know what their margins are and see what, what they've got left. Yeah, I mean, what um, do you think? Independence or biggies now? I'll go to independence. Yeah. I love independence. Better knowledge by the counter? Yeah, I just Always. like them. I just, I, the, the thing about the big guys is they won't carry all those stupid little bits, will mm. they? Now, yeah, everyone can go and get a boiler or unvented cylinder off the internet. You can get the cheapest price ever. Yeah, exactly. If you want some stupid little widget or gizmo yeah. or spare part, you go up to your independent, he's like, oh, I've got one of those somewhere, and he comes up with it. He's making nothing on that. Yeah. He's stocked it for about five years, and it's the bit you need today. Well, they just love to help you out sometimes. I mean, how many job. times have you gone into a supplier that you've used for years, yeah. and you've needed something? I mean, I was at it, this supplier I used, there's a bloke behind the counter called Steve. He had, it was like, old boy. He actually had like swastikas tattooed on his arms. Oh, so really? A bit yeah. of a dodgy old boy, yeah, I think. Yeah. But, a bit of a statement. Well, there. I think he was just a bit misguided when he was younger uh, and he loves his, changed, he loves his fishing so there you go he's a nice guy believe yeah, me are you a fisherman no well i used to i used to nick fish out of when yeah, i was a yeah. kid I used okay. to go like pirate fishing out of people's ponds <laughs> stuff like that but anyway um but i'd wait for steve to be available when i went into a supplier because uh, into this particular supplier it was a na national actually um purely because he had the knowledge you could say steve i need yeah. to get from that to that yeah. And he just go off and get the bits for you, like the bushes, the nipples, the bits yeah, and bobs. Yeah. Um, Make it all up. Yeah, so just you do could it for come you. and fit it for me, could you Steve, at the same time? <laughs> yeah. He's moved now, and the thing is, he moved to an independent, and all those people who used to wait for him in that national have gone to that independent. Oh, really? They well, it just shows, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. And they Big didn't value him, did they? I tell you, mate, he told, told some bloody dreadful jokes. And in fact, we were, well, we were at the uh, this thing filming for Peugeot at the weekend. I know you couldn't uh, make it. Yeah, but yeah. I did tell some great jokes. Dylan's behind the camera at the moment, so is Emily over here. I did tell some great jokes. Get this. They told me to stop acting like a flamingo at work. I had to put my foot down. <laughs> <laughs> I went to a job, a and I noticed, you know, it happens all over the place, it's not just a one-off, but I went to a job, and uh, I was up there talking to the builders, you know, and I was looking at it, and, and, and what they've got is they've got this house, and they've built all the way around it, doubled the size of this house on this plot, yeah. yeah. And it's very elaborate, very nice, you know. I looked at it and I said to the guy, why have you left that house in the middle? You know, why has that been left? Because 
on a VAT basis alone, knock it flat, build a new one, no yeah. vat, you know, it's got to be worth it. And he said, yeah, he said, you're right. He said, but the guy who's building his house, having his house built, you know, he said, he doesn't want to know about VAT. He doesn't want to know about anything. What, as in? In as much as... In every way possible. In every way possible, right? <laughs> so, so he said to me, he said, me on a Friday, he said, a Mercedes will pitch up here with blacked out windows. He said, we don't know who the guy is. We don't know anything about him. That's not the bloke. That's his henchman coming. Yeah. He'd come it. in with a briefcase. And he'll open the briefcase up and he's, he's got folding stuff in there. All his yeah, notes, yeah. all sorts, right? And he said, and that's how he proceeds. He said, we have to take the cash. He said, we can't spend, we can't, you know, we've got to declare it or whatever in, in, in order to pay our mortgages and everything else. He said, but this guy is just paying us, insists on paying us out in cash. Now, the idea is that he takes a property like that, he doubles the size of it. Wax everyone out in cash. He wax everybody out in cash. So, so say he's paid a million quid for that property because it's a nice place. He's, he's doubled it, yeah. suddenly it's two, two million. Yeah, yeah. He's worked everybody out in cash, so he's got rid of a, his money through that. Yeah. And then he's he can sell that like... property for, for two million, two and a half million, whatever it is. And all it is is the increase in property values. Nobody's looking for, yeah, how, did for you, that, how did that go up? They're just, it's explained. So, so yeah. suddenly he's, so, so it's this is almost money. like laundering. It is, yeah. it is exactly laundering. But we had it. That's happening all the time. Like where we are, because we're currently in Cambridge and we're not far from Newmarket. And yeah. obviously Newmarket is one of these weird towns. It's like polarity of people. So you've got almost like shakes, people yeah. who, you know, Godolphin yeah. stables are there. Yeah, of course that's um, right, it's all the horses. Exactly, the and then you've yeah. got trainers who are often on the bread line, you know, but they do it for, really? for the love of horses. And um, we were, I, there was a, there, it wasn't a, it was definitely an Arab guy, but we were doing a job for him and everything, like I think I did something like, did a two port valve and a pump or something, comes about 350, 400 quid. And I put the bill in as normal with the vat and everything on it. And he was like, oh, take that off, I want to pay cash. I was like, mate, look at your house. He had his own golf course yeah, yeah. and he's quibbling over the vat on 350 percent. quid, yeah. you know, that's mad. Yeah. But you get it all the time, you know. Yeah. In fact, I find the customers who are the best ones are the old dears and the, the normal people. You go there, you service their boiler or you fix their heating, you fix the radiator. They're there already with the money. Because you find richer people, I don't yeah. know if you find it, but I find the richer the person or the more affluent, the harder it is to get paid. Yeah. They always draw the money back, and that's why they're bloody yeah. rich in it, because no, they don't pay yeah. it out yeah. after time. I've got two, <laughs> yeah. two of those. One, one, some old lady, I went, I priced up a, a new kitchen for her, yeah. and I arrived to do the job. She wanted a new kitchen. Arrived to gut it. She got the kitchen table there. She was sitting there at the kitchen table with oh. my money for the whole kitchen, the whole job, piled up in, in banknotes and folded stuff ready to go, yeah? yeah? She said, here's your money, dear. That's money said, laundering, isn't it? I said, <laughs> I said, come on, I said, I haven't even started yet, you don't have to pay me now. She yeah. said, oh no, I want to pay you, I want to pay you. So I said, no, please don't well, pay me. They almost stress out about it, didn't they? Yeah, and so she said, no, please take it because then you've got it and I'm, you know, I won't yeah. get burgled or whatever. But she, what she insisted, and I said to her, do you know what? I could just run away. I could just go now, you know. I said, yeah. no wonder you know, hear old people getting ripped off if they do that too. But yeah, so I took all the money and of course I did bugger off, I didn't go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you go back there. And another oh. one I've got, this guy came over from Hong Kong when Hong Kong was gonna go to the- This sounds like a joke set up. No, no, <laughs> this, no. This, guy was, this guy was going to, you know, Hong Kong was going back to the Chinese, right? He lived in Hong yeah. Kong all his life. Very lovely guy, you know, straw, you know, just blazer, the, you know, the straw yeah. hat, the whole bit, you know, very puffed, very nicely spoken fella, you know. And he thought, I'm going to buy an investment property in England uh, in case it all goes wrong in Hong yeah. Kong. Yeah, yeah, so it's got something, he's got a foothold in England. So, so he came over and he, you know, found this place, a state agent, you know, bought the place and everything else, called me up, didn't know me from Adam, called me up, he said, right, I need this doing, need all this gutting, new bathroom, new kitchen, new hot water sit, from the stockpot, you know the job. Yeah, yeah, yeah the, the whole, whole job, yeah. right, so I'm going, uh, okay. So then, he paid me. What? And I said, you're kidding. And he was going back to Hong Kong. He said, right, he said, so what's it gonna take, like six weeks here, here here's the money, do the job, didn't know me from Adam. And I said, mate, you can't do this. I said, yeah, yeah maybe in Hong Kong it's all right. I said, but here, I said, yeah, send it wire the money you're back. Gonna, you're gonna get ripped off, you know, but yeah, uh, obviously yeah. he had folded stuff as well, you know, where yeah. that came from. But yeah, he said so to me, no, no, no. So I said, no, honestly, I said, you, you'll get ripped off if you do this. And he said, well, are you gonna rip me off? 
And I said, no. He said, well, yeah, then he was, I wouldn't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> but he said, yeah, but he said, I said, no, I'm not going to rip you off. He said, well, there you are. He said, I was right, a good judge of character. So I did do the job for him, actually. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He's happy. Is he back oh, in there? He didn't come back. Really? It is an investment property. So I think he's still that. living in Hong Kong. Yeah. He's got this property, if ever. He's probably yeah. renting it out. He's probably doubled his money. But on it. Have you ever thought, have you ever thought, because like you, you you said to us a couple of weeks ago, you're on holiday in France. Yeah. Have you ever thought about doing that thing? You've got, what you do as skill builder, mm. it's a broad spectrum of, I know your main trade is plumbing, isn't it? Yeah. 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 So it's a broad spectrum of stuff. You're doing lots of plastering, you're doing, you're basically you could build a house, couldn't you? Yeah. I mean, you can build a yeah, house. Yeah. Have you thought about that thing? I'm going to buy that ramshackle farmhouse in France. I'm going to take a container down there and I'm going to get five of my mates to come out for a six week holiday yeah. and we can do this place up. Have you ever thought about it? Yeah. And I, looked at, have you done it? No. I, I, Is that I'm going to do it? Well, I, yeah. well, I'd love to do no, it. I, think, I yeah. think one of the things that's put me off that is I've seen so many people do it who it's turned into a place for them to go to work, you know? Yeah. And, and although it's a good idea, and there's loads and loads of properties, we see them all the time when we're driving through France, yeah. villages which are dying on Just, their ass. You yeah, know? nobody living them. Even the boulangerie can't carry on, you know, yeah. it's, it gets bad when you the bakery it's fluent closes. in French. But it does, it, it's bad when the bakery closes, isn't it? Because that's, you know, that's the end yeah. of the village, really. Yeah, but yeah. that's what happens, and you said you could pick up these places for peanuts. And I said to my wife, Joe, I said, look, if I did that, we'd be out here, we'd both be working, she'd be doing the garden and everything. We'd go out there, we'd work like that, and we wouldn't have the Just, holiday. Yeah, exactly. It's like that, so, it's that new life in the sun or whatever. You watch them go out there, I think it's going to be brilliant. Yeah. And then, well, often it's just miles I, more hard of work than they thought. It was I know loads of people have done it, and I know, and, and it's fantastic. You know, they've done yeah. some great jobs, and that, and that, that escape to the chateau thing with yeah. what's his name? He's Tashman. You know, yeah, he's uh, done a brilliant. Walrus kid. Yeah. He's done a brilliant job there, and, and of course he got a lot of people in to help him. He, he made money out of the TV series, so it's great. But I just think if if I struggled and I went down there and I lost momentum, and I'm thinking I've had a day off because. But also, I, I sometimes think outside of the work side of things, going away somewhere is nice because you're going somewhere new. Yeah. And if you buy somewhere, it just becomes like you put it on Villas Direct or whatever yeah. it may be. You have got to yeah. worry about it when you're not there. Yeah, yeah. You're best off if you do want to do that sort of thing, long term renting. Just do like six month rentals sure, or whatever. Yeah. But at the moment, that's impossible. And you get fed up with the area. Work. You get fed up with the area. You want to move on and go somewhere else. Yeah. That's it. We got a camper bus, and you know it was. You know, a bit of an investment when we got it, but, yeah, but, but at actually, least if you get we go anywhere, somewhere. we go yeah. anywhere. We just Up sticks. sometimes we just get over the channel. We buy our block, but well, ten tickets at a time to get yeah. a cheap deal. Go over on the tunnel, get there, and we go right. Where are we going? Where left or right? And we, and, what, what, and at that point, we make up our mind. What work did you do to the camper van to soup it up? Did you do any extra plumbing? Do you know what, mate? Has it got anything <laughs> in there? Do you know what? Has it, I'd love to know. Has it got one of these in here? Do you know what? Over the, over the years, <laughs> over the years, we've had two vans, yeah, and. They are not well built. Yeah. You know, it, unless all, you go for a really nice German well, it's one. All or, this, isn't it? Again. German one or something. Yeah. Uh, loads and loads of stuff. So I'm constantly doing jobs to it. Yeah. You know, we just went away, and the whole hot water system, all the, the control panel that does everything, it, it just went. You know, oh, oh, what are we going to do? You know, so. With we a whale pump, let's do a whale pump. Yeah, it's all that, but it controls yeah. a whole lot. It's not a foot pump. It's, yeah, that's it's, old school, that. But it's all pressurised. But no, it's great. I mean, the shower in it is it's a brilliant shower. It really works well. But this yeah. control panel works a whole lot. Water heater, the whole yeah. thing. So yeah. we're going away, and suddenly this boat spoke. It was great. So I got on the phone to the manufacturer. We got them to deliver one out to a destination of our choice, so we, we hooked up and I fitted it, it on holiday. It was actually plug and play, it wasn't hard, but it's that kind of thing all the time. I'm, I'm, Does it have solar panels? No, um, it's got a plug in place for solar panels and okay. we should have solar panels and we might use them, but we were thinking of changing the van again. Now, So if we don't, we'll put them in. I know I'm asking you a lot of questions. Oh, that's I'm sort mate, of pricking through the talk, I'm gonna ask you something in a minute. Yeah, well, please don't. <laughs> <laughs> but, well, I, my brother, right, I've got a younger, uh, an older brother, sorry, lives in London, and he's very sort of, like, green. Sorry, Chris, if you're watching. Naive, him. you mean? Naive. Uh, no, 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 <laughs> as in um, renewables. Oh, renewables. Yeah, that kind of now, green, yeah. I want to know, like, everyone says, right, let's, let's get solar panels built, and I yeah. know that, obviously, wet solar panel systems work well, I've had them, yeah. in the house as I grew up yeah, and yeah. photovoltaic stuff works well but I don't know if it fully offsets there must be some chemical stuff that goes into making those panels in the first yeah, place yeah. what are you saying to people at the moment who are asking you about renewables on jobs 
I like, I've got three panels, I've, I've put some in for Dylan as well. Yeah. Um, what are they, photos I, or? Uh, uh, no, 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 they're the, the wet, water, wet, yeah, wet, they're wet good so, though. yeah, so, yeah. so I've got, I've got those three panels on my roof, kicks out actually, got two cylinders, two unvented cylinders. Daylight today is good. So easy does, to do, isn't it? does both of them, yeah. you know, in tandem. So, so yeah, by about 11 o'clock in the morning, like last summer, by 10 o'clock in the morning, you've got all the hot water for the day. Yeah. And it's like- That's a fair whack what, of money, so What are you it? gonna do? What are you gonna do with all that hot water? We have to just use it just to get rid of it, really. Yeah. It's, um, but no, I love it. But I think it's a lot of money. I think a lot of people that couldn't justify I think it's people that just want to do the right thing, really. Mm. You know, maybe people are, I'll probably say the grey pound. You know, people who've, kids are gone, they've, they've paid off their mortgage and think, do you know what, I just want to do something, do something yeah. that makes me feel good. And um, then you get that lovely little thing there and you go, oh, look at that, oh, I'm getting 98 degrees on that panel. So when you say it's a lot of money, would you say the biggest outlay is changing the cylinder over so you've got a twin coil cylinder? Yeah, I, I think actually, um, if you're changing the cylinder, then it's not too bad to mm. go for a, a solar one. Yeah. You know, a little bit of and an upgrade. Would you say, you know, like, sooner or later, people should just start thinking about putting twin core ones in anyway? Yeah. Even well, look, if they haven't got solar yet? Because it's a contingent, isn't it? Yeah. For whether you go for that. I mean, the way it is now, you've got to put that, you know, you've got to meet your carbon your carbon footprint on it, so you've got to do something. Do something you know? yeah, so, yeah. so funnily enough, I just drove down the road to this place, saw all those solar panels on those. They're all photovoltaics, aren't they? Yeah. And uh, I thought, do you know what? They look an nice eyesore, don't they? Oh, don't mate, I'll tell you. I'd like to <laughs> see them integrated. I always build in solar panels. I don't sit them on the roof. I build yeah. them in like like as if they're relaxed they're like windows or whatever. But my man's got some of those pigeons trying to get underneath it, mate, because yeah. they're the ones that yeah. sat on top of the, that's it. the thing. Yeah. I don't know if he likes me calling him my old man, but that's what I was calling him. not? I don't know. <laughs> he can hardly hear anything because I, I mean, I did my apprenticeship with him. His yeah. right ear is just gone because of drills. Not with, not with you sitting there going, Dad, 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 Dad. Cost of money. <laughs> <laughs> can I go home, Dad? That's what he used to say quite a lot. But yeah, I mean, uh, well, another thing as well apprenticeships. I mean, these are pretty big subjects. We are kind of glossing over them. But in a way, if today's video goes well, there's no reason we can't do another well, one. Well, we could chop hey. this up. We could probably chop this up yeah. because we, we've, we've covered money laundering, we've covered Game, Game of Thrones, <laughs> Eve. there's loads of things there. So let's try and chop this up so that we- uh, Okay, well, apprenticeships. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't be where I was now. So this is us, hello, this is us. We're yeah. doing a podcast and a, a video, not a podcast for you, is it? Well, I don't know. So I'm here with James and we're talking about apprenticeships. Hello, James. How are you? I'm very well, Roger. Right. Small handshake, little yeah, one. Yeah, little one. Don't no, you like want that. to do that? You're, you're like, uh, okay, <laughs> Sorry, right, so let's talk about right, apprenticeships. apprenticeships. I did my apprenticeship with my dad without, I mean, I come out of sixth form, so I was a bit late to my apprenticeship. Um, I've done media studies and stuff, which is where the filming thing came from. Oh, right. But without my old man sort of saying, look, young man, you're not going like, to bum around before you go to uni and do it history which is what I wanted to do um, he said and I'd always worked with him since I was 12 like pretty much doing weekend work with him and stuff like that so I knew what I was doing so I went and did my apprenticeship and without that I wouldn't be where I am now obviously um, so it's a big thing but I do think there is a we always hear there's a problem with apprentices or apprenticeship amounts people coming in yeah and I think it's it needs to be fixed from a few a few different ways for example, I don't think people coming out of secondary school now, and this is going to be a bit controversial, I don't think they're fully ready to work. Well, I think they're told they can't win something, they can't lose something at sports day anymore, you know, stuff like that. They're never told off properly yeah. enough. Well, you're talking about know. snowflakes, are we? Well, no, I'm not talking about that. I just want people to realise that you can get things wrong and be blamed for it. And I don't think kids come out of school anymore feeling like they... They yeah, can, yeah, that you know. So they turn up to work and they get. I mean, I had an apprentice. He was always on his phone. You know, uh, he just couldn't figure out why that would be annoying to yeah, an employer. Yeah, yeah. But it's like, well, come on, guys, you should be teaching that in year ten. Yeah, you know. So yeah, it's uh, true. get me started now. No, no, no. It's, it's <laughs> absolutely true. And I, 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 the the one thing I really don't want to do is is to slag off or condemn younger, younger people. And yeah, the, reason, yeah. the reason is that, believe it or not, I was young once. Yeah, I can't remember. And, that one, okay. I don't think. Is it doodle bugs and that? I don't think. <laughs> way before that. <laughs> way before that. Yeah. No, I came over with the Vikings. As, as in, the, <laughs> I did as, as well. As indeed did you, you know. Yeah, I was going to say. Actually, definitely got this the, was a, this the Viking thing. Where though. you're living now is a big Viking stronghold, so you haven't moved yeah. far, have you? Really? Well, yeah. Roman as well, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Colchester. So there you go. No, all but right, I, right, I, right. I reckon you Viking. Anyway, so yeah. <laughs> so I digress, right? So I don't think I was that clever when I was a kid. 
really. Uh -huh. I think I thought I was, and people tolerated me, and thank God they did. Mm. But when I first went out on site, I, so what I did was your my break apprenticeship, then? right? Yeah, so, how, did, how did you get into well, it? Well, I, I did I, basically. I wanted to leave school because I could see it just I bored out my brains in mm. school, you know. And my father was against that, but I said, well, I'm going to be an apprentice plumber." And he went, "Okay, well, I suppose you know, if you want to leave, you've got to go and do it." So I went to be an apprentice plumber. I got saddled with this guy, or hooked up with this old guy with a pipe, old man, and uh, he was about two years away from retirement. He did not want an apprentice. He right. didn't want anybody young talking, you know, the nonsense I was talking. So he <laughs> ignored me. He ignored me all day. I mean, yeah. he must have said to the boss, I don't want an apprentice. Don't give him to me. So, so even when I you tried him. to be nice to him. He didn't talk to me. He didn't do anything. He's, he's your favorite his sandwich I bought for he didn't, he, he didn't even say sweep up. You know, he just left me alone, just like blank me and thinking, if I ignore him long enough, he'll, he'll go, go away. away. <laughs> right? So, so. He drove to work in his little van. He wouldn't give me a lift. I had to get there. And it could be South London, it could be, you know, 10 miles or 15 miles. Oh, go, go. So, yeah, on a bike or whatever. So I'd get there, you know, and you've got to be on site. It was 8 o'clock then or whatever. And, uh, you know, then at the end of the day, you'd get into his little van and drive off and I'd have to make my way back. So it was very, very demoralizing the whole, the whole process. Yeah. And in the end, I left. I just went and I didn't tell my dad I was leaving. And that was a plumbing and, apprenticeship? Uh, it was a plumbing apprenticeship. So I was out of it, having, you know, just hung around really. Um, and then I did a bit of traveling, did a bit of whatever, you know, the, the hippie thing and everything was. And eventually, after a lot of things, I came back thinking, do you know what? I need to do something, I need to get a trade. And then I went to college and then I did plumbing. Mm. And why plumbing? The only reason I went for plumbing is because I thought emergencies, that's where you can call, <laughs> you can get that phone a ring, you can go out, you can earn a hundred quid in, in yeah, the fourth an emergency two, service. All this stuff. So so I thought that's a good thing to be into, you know, and I was and it was purely for the money. It wasn't that I loved plumbing at all and I probably in a way, I don't know, do I, do I love plumbing now? I guess I do. There there is a satisfaction about it. Like yeah. there's nothing better than brand new system, turning it on and rubbing your hands. I bet you do this, Roger, every plumber does this. You go in, if you go into a pub or someone's house, even if you're just going around for tea, mm. do you rub your ra the radiators? Yeah, yeah. It's course, weird, isn't I it? I touch the radiators. Oh, I'm, all, I'm like, also, can't look at your air in coming. Straight away, and people are like, what is wrong with you? Also, yeah. I feel responsible for the plumbing for some reason. Yeah. You know, if I go into a pub, for example, go into the loo, I'm looking. Yeah, oh, looking don't get at me Looking at all oh, it, and then if there's something wrong, I'm thinking I could fix that. Yeah. And uh, I'll just cut that bit out. It's got all mould next to it, right? It's crazy, isn't it? You think, why am I doing this? And I went to one place, funny enough, for another completely different reason. And uh, I JSP the people who make the, the masks and the hard hats and so on, and uh, walked in their, their their loo, and it was flooding. The whole thing was overflowing. Right. And, I, and suddenly, yeah, so suddenly I've gone there, gone there for a business meeting, something to do with, you know, the magazines and so on, and uh, suddenly I've sleeved all up, was in there yeah. fixing it because I could. Yeah, yeah. You know? Did yeah. they pay me for it? No. Yeah. But, um, you know, you've got a big old thing out with loads of money in it. Do you know what we call... <laughs> Wave the fat. <laughs> do you know what we call Dylan and I... This rescuer syndrome. Do you suffer from that? Uh, that how you do have you have to help people out? Yeah. Uh, and you're the knight in shining uh, armour. You know what? You what just watching a, someone get on the bus, like an old lady or someone who's got a pram, I'll just be like, I've got to help them out. And Emily will look at me like, Why are you doing that? Because yeah. Emily. She comes across, people who've met her, as nice, but she's fundamentally evil. She gives them, <laughs> <laughs> she gives them a kick in. Yeah, she, she would. She'd, so nick, she'd like nick their pram. The Good Samaritan, <laughs> so the Good Samaritan story, she sees someone lying in the street who needs help, she yeah. walks over, gives them a kick in, then walks back over the other side. Exactly, yeah. yeah. It's exactly her. Yeah. Uh, I know this kind of people. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, but, um, yeah, but it is—it's it's in your nature, isn't it, to just help people all the time? Yeah, yeah. Go like you say, go to pubs, or if you go around a mate's house, and you'll look at stuff. You'll look at the board and you'll be like, "Look, they should have put a filter on that yeah, or something." But then there's that other thing. I mean, it is a completely different subject. If you see bad work, how, how ready are you to see someone's work and criticise it? Well, right. I think it's the easiest thing in the world to do, isn't it? I Everyone think, has yeah. their own way of doing things. Well, look it? at YouTube. Look at yeah. YouTube, mate. Yeah. You know, we put videos up on YouTube. Yeah. And the first thing I say, I was talking to Robin the other day, 
Robin Clever about uh, you know mental health basically about how strong you've got to be mentally to put up with all that oh yeah you know, this like job. you're in a house at midnight and it's leaking and you can't get the thing done and you go where's my hot water and you just oh, I just want to go home yeah you've yeah. got to really dig deep haven't you to yeah, find definitely find now, at moments you sit in the van and just twist the steering wheel yeah so oh. so so from that point of view you've got to be really tough to do it but then if you if you start on YouTube you've got to be even tougher because you go down in the morning you have a look see what comments have come on and you go, there's some guy criticising because you put the pipe that side of walls yeah. and that side and they don't, don't, see it, don't they? You know, often they don't see the full picture. No. And sometimes it's just someone's personal opinion. Like just around the corner there, we've got a video, we did a video about a shower tray. And we it, were yeah. looking at it earlier, yeah. weren't we? The yeah. Empty, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like whether you should do diagonal cuts or have standard flat tiles. Yeah, yeah. And that is effectively a choice. Yeah. It's not a reg. It's all about like, getting the water to run Yeah, away. I mean, that's one that always it. gets me. These, right? People, people will see a beautiful job and yeah. someone, they'll look on a photo yeah. and they'll be like, that tundish, there's not 300 mil before the first yeah. bend. Yeah. And I always think, I always come with two, two thoughts. Number one, how do you know? Because you can't measure a photo. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And number, this is going to be a controversial one, yeah. who thought up 300 mil? Yeah, yeah. Where'd that come yeah. from? Yeah. Stuff like that, regulations, yeah. I was a bit like, why is that that? Did someone just think that up well, in a boardroom? I know some of these guys who sat on these committees. You know, yeah. when I was in the Institute of Plumbing, you ever had anything to do with the Institute uh, of Plumbing? No, well, only at trade shows. There's a lot chat. of guys there who yeah. just spend their life on committees sitting there going, all oh, right, 300 mil, let's yeah, change that. Do. do you know what, 300 mil, uh, I've been carrying out some experiments and it splashes over the top of the tundish. Should we make it 308 millimetres? And, oh, and, and, and then they have a day's conversation about it and they go, yeah. uh, so motion carried there, 300, and you get that with gas, don't you, all the time. You've got all these blooming things going oh, on. I moved away from gas yeah. because, of, because of the stress. The change in yeah. regulations. Yeah. The change of an air brick that was good one, one week isn't yeah, it isn't what, it what's changed yeah i know you know so it, it, not all the time people are constantly looking for things like is that 300 now you know yeah. and i know sometimes you can't make it. yeah and it'll still be fine yeah i mean it's not as so if you these just it. flow at full so you level. test it run yeah. it run it and if it doesn't splash up yeah happy days yeah. but the other thing is that it used to be metal now you're allowed to use plastic yeah to do it so. well we had the barrier pipe thing yeah. and you're almost trying to Still trying to educate people now about the fact that it's got a barrier so it can't get air in it anymore. Yeah, yeah. But people still get funny about it. I mean, have you sort of had any dealings with any of the sort of like different types of joining uh, plastic pipe and yeah, stuff? Yeah, all the way. Like funny like enough. JGSB fit, yeah. obviously. Well, have you done any dispute line stuff? Because yeah, we did some stuff yeah, for them. Yeah. I think their stuff's the amazing. Yeah, yeah, the crimp stuff. Yeah, I only, like it. The only problem with it is 16 mil. Oh, and that is because oh, it's continental. Started. And all the continental no, stuff is 16 no. and we're exactly. 15. Now that, Maybe we're the old ones out, wouldn't we? That one millimetre, <laughs> when you go oh. and cut the pipe and then you realise and you haven't got a fitting. You, I bet you've tried it. You're like, I'm just going to get a standing knife and sit you have to, There's it, no it, way. Heat the olive up or do whatever you need to do yeah, just, to, just to get it. That, oh, you know. Yeah, but, I know. What, what a nightmare. Anything. What a nightmare we're in. Well, you must have had jobs you don't want. You say, I'm going to price yeah, the hell out of always. this. Always. Yeah. And, and then I won't get it. But you always, always get the get ones it. you price. Always. And yeah. like, oh, God. Yeah. Why? Why? You know. I've, I've had customers where I was doing, we were all on site and there was. There was about four or five chippies, plasterers, uh, I was a plumber, and we'd go around and we'd do houses together. And uh, we got to this one house, and I said to the chippy, you know you get this smell for like, this person's gonna be a troublesome customer. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I could tell with this, this lady, she's gonna be trouble. And I said to Al, <laughs> And you know it's about that, Al. Uh, I said, Al, I don't want to work for her. I said, and she's going to do you for money and me. Yeah. So let's just get out of it. And he said, Jimmy, work for me. I'll take the hit if anything happens. Uh -huh. And she took him, I mean, for my bill, I mean, all I'd done, I think we first and second fixed the kitchen, did a couple of radiators, bits and pieces. But she still hit, she tried to hit me for 400 quid uh, out of nowhere yeah. for nothing, for no reason. Yeah. I almost felt like. So did he cover it? Did he? Yeah, cover yeah, yeah, yeah. He covered your bit. Yeah, he did. I bet but you felt but a bit he was mad a bit. That, he was he? a bit like, well, you know, you did say. I was like, mate, this is yeah. what being self-employed is about. Yeah. You know, knowing about this. But it's also stopping yourself from turning up at a house at one in the morning, turning up water off, and then filling up the hole with post mix, which is exactly what I wanted to do. Yeah, yeah. Or the other one that you hear about people doing, where they drill a hole in the waste and fill up the waste with expanding foam. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Do they deserve it, these people? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, brilliant. I'm, I'm not going to declare, I'm not gonna love declare to the do ones it. I've done like that. Oh, like, I've never two, had the balls. I've never had the balls to do it. One or two I've done, you know, because I yeah. think that's that's all you can do, you know. Yeah. 
that they, if so angry. I mean, I get so angry. Yeah. We, we've, Robin and I have touched on, you know, people knocking you deliberately, but I get so cross with people if they think they're not going to pay me that I just, yeah, I go around there, rip the whole lot out, do anything, yeah. anything. And I tell them, I say, I've never been knocked, never been knocked, yeah. because I wouldn't let it happen, because, you know, and they go, oh, but, but honestly, I, I'd, I'd pursue it. It wouldn't matter what it took for me to pursue it, but I'd pursue it. Have you ever done the court one? Yeah, not, yeah, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I've not. Had, yeah. I've so far. I don't know if it's just because it's just me on my own. Like I've got my customers now, and they're my mates, or you know, people who live in the local villages. Because I live out and around, you know, yeah, yeah. out in the sticks. And now, if someone rings me up suddenly saying they want us to come and do a job, who aren't, who isn't my current customer. I always wonder what had they done to their previous plumber yeah. to have to ring yeah. another one up. And where, it always worries me. And say, so where'd you get my name from? And, yeah. And I won't go and, unless that they've got a contact because yeah. if, if they Recommendation. Been, recommendation. So that way you know that you've got a mutual person that if they knock you, you can say to that person, oh, your mate has just knocked me for whatever. Yeah. So there's, you've got Bit some protection. Course, then, you've got some protection. Because we can do that because we live in villages or small towns or whatever and we work, we network. Mm. But when you're dealing with somewhere like London where nobody even knows their neighbour and it's all just, yeah. it all gets a bit difficult, doesn't it? Then? Yeah, I've always steer clear at uh, London. Yeah. It must be a different world to work as a job in plumber, you know, yeah. for But yourself. then it is all about the rip-off. It's all about yeah. how much money can you take from that person. Yeah, and that's and, and, and in a way, oh I've got to say this, it sounds terrible, but it's kind of exciting that, isn't it? To mm. go, right, what can I get today? What can I actually yeah. make today? You know, yeah, and you get these people who just go, right, so it's that you need a new central heating pump, £1,500. And they go, oh yeah, okay, all right, I'll have to have it, you know, it's got to be done. And you go, whoa. And then the next week you're going, I wonder if I could just push it up a bit. I can't. Oh, that's like a different world, isn't it? But that's how they go. This yeah. is how they work, isn't it? I know loads of them who... See, in a way, I suppose Cambridge is like that. And there was a, I was working for uh, an agency where they wanted a new toilet bowl and they told me how much I, I have to charge for it. I see. And it was way more than what I charged. Yeah. It, literally, it was quite a simple job. Whipping out a close coupled system, all exposed, putting a new one in. So mm. was it two screws there, two yeah. screws there, one for your thing and you suck yeah. it for your waist. Yeah. Yeah. So that probably take about two hours and cost you the price of a toilet. Yeah. You know, and they yeah. wanted us to charge like over a grand easy yeah. for it. Yeah. I was and like, well, because I can't charge that. I just feel bad. Well, if you go, if you go to the people that are running the big the big companies and you're just you're subbing for them, you know, so mm. they they're feeding you the work. Yeah. Now they want a percentage of exactly. what you're charging. Exactly. And they're putting a mark so up for their for, office and all that. Yeah. Aren't they? So therefore, if yeah. you went in. And you did a job like a central heating pump for two hundred quid. They go, what are we on that? You know, yeah. we're running four page well, also, ads. Also, they're spending other people's money in a way. Yeah, aren't they? yeah. You know, so like the landlord, everybody encourages you to push it up, don't they? And yeah. the landlord work was always good. I, I did quite a lot of that. You know, yeah. estate agents. If you could get in, yeah. picking up the key, going there to do the job, yeah. not being able to park. God, I'm a grumpy old sod, I No, 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 absolutely. <laughs> All that has to be put in. Funnily enough, I was just saying, I did a job uh, a few weeks ago, uh, underground water main, because I love doing underground water mains, because two connections, basically, yeah. just easy peasy, yeah? Do you like digging? So, yeah, I love it. Yeah, I love a bit of digging. I'm out there in the sunshine, just digging all yeah, the birds it today. are singing. It's good, yeah. it's easy. So, yeah. so these, these people, they're putting, uh, the, the water company put in four and a half grand to do this bit of pipe and it was 25 quid's worth of blue poly yeah, yeah. and it was easy because I knew I was going to go under the house I was only digging that much and then I was in under the yeah, house just and, it under, and yeah. through you know and, and it, up it came the other side of sweet as you know yeah. two connections job done and then when I spoke to the the, the guy at the water company and I've done that job you know obviously I undercut them a little bit you know on the four and a half grand yeah but um, still but it was happy days, but, but um, I said to the guy, you know, why didn't you want that job? He said, oh, we didn't want it. You know, I said, why? He said, no parking. He said, what are we going to do? He said, but our guys will not lug tools down the road. You know, stop in the middle of the road, offload. They want their van there. They've got their tea and their yeah, yeah, everything. Yeah, yeah, they've got everything they want. Yeah. And, and they don't want to lug it all about. I mean, I could never see myself as being one of those guys who do like the London tube stuff, no. where you just get on the tube with your hand tools. That's it, yeah. I just watch all that yeah. and I think, well, there's a, there's a better way to live, better way to earn money, yeah. sit in a studio all day, yeah. film here. <laughs> so go on then, Skill Builder, what is the, what, where did Skill Builder start? What was the, 
What was the sort of catalyst that yeah, wasn't so going? Why, so why would anybody wake up one morning and go, do you know what? I'm going to start a YouTube channel. I have no idea. <laughs> I feel, who would want to do such a silly my, thing? My route, my route <laughs> was slightly easier. Dylan is standing there behind the counter. Um, behind the counter? What were the merchants now, are <laughs> Sorry, yeah. I'll do that again. With the back, Dylan, big, old, Dylan, big old glass jar of humbugs. <laughs> Dylan, Dylan is standing there behind the camera. Is that what that is, a camera? <laughs> Sorry, mate. So Dylan is standing there behind the ca camera. Go on, have again. another run at it. Let's do that one more time. Dylan, he's the cameraman. He's standing there behind the camera. And uh, <laughs> we we started Skill Builder up together. But before that, before that, we were involved in a, an enterprise called Juice and TV. Okay. Which was they put these screens up behind the counter, and. That's why I said counter camera, counter camera. Oh, okay. They put these screens up behind the counter, and when you were in the queue waiting to be served, you were bombarded with. By this, stuff. by that. Yeah, yeah, little videos. And it was a great idea. You couldn't turn the volume down, you couldn't do anything. The poor people behind the, behind counter, the counter, counter was going on and on all day long. <laughs> you know, and they got people signed up for it. So we were making these videos, and honestly, it was a, it was a production line, you know. Mm. And that was before YouTube came along. So we were doing this, and I said to Dylan, if we ever get out of this, we're going to do something better. We're going to do something with a little bit more time involved, a bit more. And then, of course, YouTube, bit more control. YouTube came along, mm. and um, it was just perfect as an idea. Well, we ran, for a few years, we ran what we called Self Builder, thinking we were going to target just self builders, but that was a bit narrow. Mm. And then we changed it to Skill Builder, and the idea of Skill Builder is that it helps you build the skills to build with. Now, from my point of view, I know a lot of firemen who are bricklayers, plumbers, you know, whatever, yeah, yeah, yeah. landscape guard, there's a lot, even some policemen, you know, people that just want to do a little bit and they're kind of a little bit out of their depth, but they just want a bit of guidance. Now, and I'm they want to do it right, don't they? Yeah, I'm not yeah. suggesting it's for them as such, but, but those kind of people, people like me who have gone into a person's house, done the plumbing, and they say, oh, we need somebody to knock a wall down. Do you know anybody? And I'm thinking, yeah, I can knock a wall down, you know. Yeah. So, at that point, you're upgrading your skills, you're learning new stuff, you need to find somewhere to learn it from. So, yeah. so we're finding a lot of people are, are, are traveling with us, if you like. Well, you and know. broad spectrum of stuff. I mean, yeah. I remember your videos, uh, you did a series uh, when you were doing an extension, and it was just like a, almost a vlog video yeah. of the whole thing, getting to know all the guys who are on site and all That's that it. sort of yeah. stuff. Yeah. I thought it was really, really cool. We, you we know, we're, you're more. learning, but you're also investing a little bit in the people behind that's it, it. It's a bit of you fun. know there's yeah a, well, let's a story. Face it. yeah yeah exactly it's all that's about a story isn't it every time yeah, yeah so, so your story how did you get involved in uh, youtube well i mean i did media studies at a level so for some reason that's but i'd always work with the old man and i'll be like i need to cut clean here i got chucked out of sixth form all right yeah that's i got good. chucked out of sixth form in the second year because apparently i wasn't turning up to my lessons which is not true but I'm not going to get bogged down in it. Uh, so I left, paid to do my exams. Uh, and then that year, when I was about 17, 18, that was when I started my apprenticeship. Um, I did my apprenticeship and then just came back to it. It was funny enough, it was a friend of mine who was doing a website about holidays. And he said to me, he said, you've got niche knowledge on plumbing because you've yeah. been doing this for so long. Yeah, yeah. Um, why don't you start up a channel about that? Yeah. And uh, I bought this tiny little camera and just started making videos. And my first videos, they're still on YouTube now. I know, I've seen them probably oh, now. mate, they're it's so great, different, aren't they? It? Yes. It's just like, oh, this is how you do this. I'm not even on the... I love it. And I was all fat as well. Oh, I'm not skinny now, but, you know. I love that. that, that yeah. when, when you can you see that sort of first development. Oh, I loved it, and yeah. You think, uh, and you look back, you think, my goodness, look yeah. at that, that was so naff. But then, you think, do you, you find didn't now... naff at the time. Do you think people think now, oh, you did this because you had this inner plan that this was going to be some empire of videos. Mm. I mean, I, I for me, it's just been each week I released a video and that's really it. I just looked to the next week. I wasn't yeah. planning to turn this into what it is now with a studio and all that sort of stuff. I don't think it just sort of organically happened. I don't think many yeah. people do have a plan. I think, no. I think when you read it, and, and again, you know, I've said this before, but I read quite a lot of autobiographies. And when you read about how people got where they got, mm. a lot of it was just complete accident. Well, often you know? just saying yes to stuff. Yeah. Often I'll just someone like, like, I'm doing some mad stuff next year that yeah. I haven't sort of said anything about yet, but it is mad. Yeah. And it's the sort of thing, if I'd have taken 10 seconds to think about it, mm. I wouldn't be doing it. But unfortunately I said yes straight away. Well, not unfortunately. 
It's just mad. I'm going to Sri Lanka and they bomb the hell out of the place. Oh, yeah. no, we're, no, we're fitting go, loads go. of water treatment stuff in there. Yeah, so, brilliant. Uh, me yeah. and a friend of mine, so we're going to go around doing like, yeah. loads of aid work. Yeah. So taking that plumbing thing out there, doing some videos about it. But straight away, got some negativity from people about it online because they're like, you're just promoting yourself. It's yeah. like, no, I yeah. just want to go out there and help people, yeah. you know, and do this sort of thing. But it's just people weird. I think weird. in a way that's, you know, it's like, it's like um, Stacey... Was Dooley. Stacey Dooley got criticised for being out in Africa holding the little oh, yeah, child. Yeah, yeah. And I remember that. Yeah, last month. The white saviour, another white saviour coming to rescue Africa. And I know what they're saying. I know mm. that, that, that criticism. But but the re net result of that was that, that, that they were down, that, that comic relief were down by eight million quid yeah. on their on their take because people went, you know what, I'm not gonna bother then. If that's what you call me a white saviour, I'll keep my money in my bank account. Yeah. Thanks very much. So so that guy, as well meaning as he might have been that MP, actually did a tremendous amount of harm oh, to that to cause. That, yeah. And he didn't step in and do anything himself. Yeah. He didn't go out there. He's not. Well, so was, it's very easy to criticise everybody else. You know, geld off and all the rest of it. You know, he's a bit of a gobby guy and mm. everything. But you know, he, he, he raised well, money crit through criticising big business for for saying uh, we're going to sponsor you a million quid, yeah. uh, but we want our name on the thing. Yeah, yeah. People get the ump about that. It's like yeah, no, yeah, yeah. you're raising a million quid. Ah, You'd never raise that money without corporates. We're, you know, get, we're getting it. You know, like, like, <laughs> here's a here's a classic example of that right we've got abacus bathrooms who i loved a bit so mm. I, I went up to abacus bathrooms to see them not about doing videos but just went up to see it i was that impressed with the company and their whole ethos and the way they were trying to make systems and, and, and components that made the plumber's life easier yeah you know which i think is tremendous when you when you design well, listen something, to think, the plumbers as well Exactly. You know, How easy that. can we make this to fit? The guy was a merchant. He was got plumbers coming in all day long. He listened to them. He worked stuff out, and they built his whole manufacturing thing on on that basis. So lovely company. So somewhere down the line, we said we're going to make some videos. Great, and they financed the, the making of the videos. Mm. Now, that's, as you know, you've got a studio here. Yeah. You, know, you you build the thing. It takes days. It takes filming. It takes editing. It takes yeah, yeah. Editing, well, it yeah. takes you off the tools. So. You know, <laughs> there's generic information there which is of use to people mm. yeah regardless of whether they're fitting an abacus bathroom or any other Anything. bathroom yeah the stuff in there about leveling a bath up and doing all the other things well, all the there. stuff you probably don't think about so you know, just so, do naturally so they can get that they can watch youtube and they can get that for nothing yeah they've got to pay a penny for it right just but, watch it and yet i know you're and say. yet they're going too much abacus bathrooms in here. This is a bit heavy on abacus bathrooms. Oh. Why don't you mention other bathroom manufacturers? Go, yeah. So you want us to abacus bathrooms are paying for all this, all this filming costs, everything mm. else, and you want us to say to abacus bathrooms, oh, by the way, we're going to mention your competitors in here because it's fair. Well, you're, like, you're, the way they should see it is abacus bathrooms are paying for this video to be produced so you can watch it for free. Yeah, that's how absolutely. it should be seen. But unfortunately, there are a lot of idiots out there. Yeah, and uh, I mean, I mean, we get bad comments on videos. I mean, like we were saying earlier on about the stress of the job and everything, getting bad comments. It used to mean something, but now I don't know. I just learn. You know, if someone said to me to my face in the pub, uh, you know, that was they a bad won't. video, they that won't. would matter a bit then, and I could talk to them about it. But people behind, um, you know, a keyboard, which I think is probably yeah. one of the biggest problems of everything today, from politics yeah. all the way through to sorting things out, is the anonymity behind the keyboard yeah. that people have, you know, yeah. and that yeah. power that they appear to have. And also you know. the quick reaction. Yeah. That, you know, you would think, right? So you've got a video, right? It's five minutes long. Mm. A guy's watched 20 seconds of oh, it. Oh, they've already hit the keyboard. Yeah, I know. And you go, <laughs> some <laughs> people have commented, like, well, they dislike a video. Yeah. I was like, well, that went out at eight, and you've disliked yeah. a 20 minute video after one minute. <laughs> so it's like, oh, what is wrong with you? You should have done this, you should have done that. So if you look at two minutes into the video, you'll see where I do do that. But yeah. no, they just want to comment. What, what do you think? Let's, let's have a little, let's, let's put ourselves in their shoes. What do you think they're going to say is bad about this video? This one, they talk too much. <laughs> <laughs> and depending yeah. on who they like, they yeah. go, oh, Roger talked too much or James talked too much. Yeah, I'm or watching an interview and they were opinionated. Yeah. How dare they? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I tell you what, there is so much here to disagree with if you want to. Oh, I tell you, there is. Yeah. And we could do another video and disagree with everything we just we said. We should just do another video about moaning. <laughs> <laughs> what would you call well, it? moaning about moaning? Yeah. Let's do that. Let's moan about people moaning all the yeah. time. I mean, what are they on about? 
yeah. <laughs> Sounds still okay? But I think you take it. It's part of the, it's, it. It goes with the territory. Yeah. And and actually, I've got to say, I'm a sensitive soul. You know, I, my skin isn't as thick as it could be hmm. in places. But and I always find sometimes in the morning. So I've been out on Friday yeah. night or Saturday night. I've got up on Sunday. I've got the ump anyway, as Emily will tell yeah, you. Yeah, I am yeah. the worst. First hour of the day, Grumpy. just don't go near. And I'll get the laptop out and I'll have a little look and there'll be just one person from a video maybe four years ago or something yeah. and they'll say something and I'll just type, I'll just be like, Some, do you ever type stuff back? And then just delete yeah, yeah, all absolutely. of what you said without yeah, yeah. sending it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've done, actually, I've accidentally sent a message like that to a customer once. Because it's like feeding yeah. the trolls, isn't it? You should, yeah. you shouldn't respond, but we do. And, and yeah, so so on any given day, I could be very sensitive, yeah. and it and it can slay me. I get one stupid comment, and I think about it for two or three hours afterwards. Or another time, it'd be really damning, and I just let it go. Yeah. Like the best one we got this morning, I think it came up. Is it Robin? You know, it was, works with me. He said uh, you and Robin are like. Mick Jagger and Keith Richards' older brothers. <laughs> thought, that's fair play. Older brothers? Older Keith brothers. Richards' older, older brothers. brothers. Even older than Mick Jagger. Right, okay. I thought yeah. that's good, isn't it? What do I get? What do you think I get? Emily, don't say. You know already, don't you, Dylan? No, go on. I'll get Bradley Cooper. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah I've seen yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Every time I'm like, yes. But she thinks Bradley Walsh from The Chase. <laughs> Bradley Cooper, the actor and American sniper, Every time someone says that in a video, yeah. I almost want to like give them a free like back massage or something. But as soon as you said Bradley Walsh, you thought Bradley Walsh, didn't no, you? No, 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 I don't know. Who, I don't know. Who welcome, I think welcome to the chase. <laughs> you know what? I think the best thing I did that's given me a thick, a thick skin is play a lot of competitive sport. Oh, like, right. Especially cricket. Cricket, cricket yeah. Yeah, because uh, as a batsman, you just get sledged all the time. And when someone says something to you online, you're like, that is nowhere near as bad. Like sometimes you walk out to the crease before you've even done anything. Like someone's just calling you a yeah. or whatever. Like, really? you know, oh, it's awful. And you think it's a lovely quintessential so, English game. Yeah, I think someone's, so similar. Someone's really? talking about your missus while you're out there. But, well, actually that, that never really happens, Emily. Led Zeppelin's first gig down in Bristol. They are they a got, Brazil band, are they? No, 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 they're from Birmingham, aren't they? But, oh, but they? they went down, yeah, it's an easy, Thing, yeah, down the yeah, Anyway, they got this gig down in Bristol, got blooming booed off, they got stuff thrown at them, a load of farm boys in there, and they didn't like the idea of these, uh, the, the girls were fancying the blokes on stage, so they went for them, you know, they just beat them, them with stuff, so do you think? Yeah, yeah. Led Zeppelin. Yeah. You've seen Led Zeppelin on their first gig. Yeah, watch them got beat just, up. Yeah, just incredible to see these people, the way they went, you know, through their evolution and just carried on. And, you know, again, it's like, Getting a thick skin, isn't it? Just yeah, believing I mean, in yourself. Yeah. Why did we get onto music? Why I don't know. I don't know. I talk about it all day. We talk about, about anything, can't we? So, yeah. So yeah. You get, did you? Were you in a band or not? Yeah, it was in a band called Asylum. Nearly got signed. Nearly went on tour with Motorhead. Really? Yeah. And then they were in Germany, and then they wanted us to pay like ten grand to go on tour with them, yeah. um, and we didn't have that money, and that was the end of that. We are plumbers rather than musicians. Oh, I feel like we're drawing to a close, so yeah, I'm going to yeah, do some proper questions here. Yeah, okay, right. mate. All right, yeah. Um, well, and they're all they're all pretty they're well. all going to be pretty morbid. All right, sorry <laughs> to say. Um, You've heard of last that. meal. What would you have? It's got to be a roast dinner. It has to be something healthy. Healthy. <laughs> 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 something that takes really long to cook. So would we ever get any work done? Supposing you and I were out on site. Oh, I think we'd be good. We're trying to get planned. I think there's always like, a time and a place. 10 o'clock, have a chat, music quiz, radio two. I mean, really after that, I don't you tend to have a break. I don't usually break yeah, at lunch, yeah. just yeah. carry on. Who wants a break at lunch you know, when you can mate, finish it after it? My mate Alan, who's now in Thailand, he'd be watching this high out. <laughs> he'd be watching this. And um, he, uh, he used to say to me, I think, he, he wanted me there for the company. He's one of those guys who didn't want to work on his own. Mm. You know? Hey, come get us a hand with this job, you know? So yeah, so what time do you want me there? I said, oh, seven o'clock, should we get there at seven o'clock? I'm like, oh, it's a bit early for me, but I'll do it, you know, whatever yeah. it was, you know? So we'd get out on site at seven o'clock, and go, right. And he'd have a look around, he'd go, right, I think we need a few parts. For you. And he said, let's go down the merchants. I said, well, you go down the merchants, get the parts, I'll start draining down, get the old boiler out, all the rest of it, blah, blah, blah. And uh, he goes, all oh, right, no, you, you can come with us if you want. And then, well, uh, yeah, we'll have a sit in the van then, together. He said, then um, then we can stop for a bit of breakfast on the way, you know? 
So, mate, you got me so, here at seven. So, 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 so we, we roll out of breakfast. We might get back to the site for 10 o'clock if we're lucky, do a little bit, and then it's like two o'clock in the afternoon, and he's going, should, should we call it a day? Should we go home? He wants to be home for countdown or whatever. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that was it. I was thinking, what have we done here? Yeah. And I worked with him one place in, in Wimbledon, and we were there till about nine o'clock at night. And he was going, I've never worked this, this late in my whole life. And, uh, and then lucky we, man, eh? And then we drove <laughs> home. We drove home, and just as we got home, we got a phone call from the customer saying there was a leak, Ooh. so we had to drive back. That phone call. Leak. And then he's going, oh. You're like, oh, God. Yeah, yeah. Do I answer? Do you know what it was? And again, this is Alan, you can, he knows this, but I, if I've got a leak on a joint, like a solder joint, I want to know why. Yeah, yeah. It's not just a question of draining it, stabbing it with a bit more flux, stabbing it. I'm going, so what's failed? Why has it failed? Do you know, yeah. Did I not run the heat enough? And um, he went, oh no, it'd be all right, just stab it up. So, so we just gave it a little bit more flux, a little bit more solder, wiped it around, went, tested it up, it's fine, went. And then we got back almost at the same point on the road where we got that call. She said, it's still leaking. So when we went back, I said, look, we're going to take it apart. I don't care what you say, we're going to take this apart. Unsweated it is a flux hair. Flux uh, brush, well, in flux there. brush hair. Yeah, in there. One strand of hair going straight through the joint. And that I wasn't like that. I mean, it track. kept leaking on the solder and I did put a bit more in. And I actually looked and it was a ripple. It was almost like when they rolled the pipe, yeah. it had rippled. And it was very hard to see, but it was just enough to make it so the yeah. solder wouldn't sort of run in Have there. Have you had a pinhole in on copper pipes? Yeah, uh, unfortunately, when I was uh, power flushing. So I bunged, uh, the, bunged the F and E, you know, yeah, valve yeah, the F and E, yeah. valve the feed off and bung the thing with a push fit cap. Yeah. And you go in there to just press power flush it and you end up with water coming through someone's ceiling. Yeah. And all they see is water coming through the ceiling. Yeah. It's it like, wasn't, this this wasn't isn't like my fault. Started, yeah, this is not my fault. It's yeah. just pinhole pipe. It's what happens, isn't it? So, the apprentice so, is a lay So it was old, was it? Yeah, fairly old. It's one of them ones you'd have been a bit worried about. Have you ever had it for new? No. Like straight out. Never like had that. it on new pipe. I've had that. Well, like a fissure in the pipe, so it's no, not it's just, just badly. It's tiny, tiny bits of carbon, apparently. Just like old. Just impurities, and they in just the, sit there, and they, they, they get flushed out by the water. Right, but maybe. what they do say, a bit of a tip, if ever it happens to you, and it probably won't, hopefully, touch wood, um, <laughs> But what you've got to do is you've got to cut out enough of the pipe to get the manufacturer's name and the, the thing on it. Oh, and then so that'd in. be a meter because the pipe is stamped every meter. Yeah, yeah, cool be copper or whatever it is. Wh whoever it is, yeah. yeah. So when you pull that out, you want to take it back and get your, your money or your claim or whatever, which I did successfully. But so you have, well, to, I mean, it's you not have to cut out enough pipe, send it back to them, and then they, they, they well, pay out. I mean, it's not like the copper of old. My brother, Chris again, he bought a house in Watford. Blimey, the copper. I mean, you almost think your pipe slice has gone blunt. Yeah. But then you think, hold oh, on, I'm still cutting through copper wool here. Right. Thick as hell. Yeah, yeah. You know, whereas now, I mean, they I can't say it. about this here, but the actual 15 mm here is just, they, they, they I mean, it's never going to last. There's a shortage of war in Zambia, and they, they halve the thickness of it. Yeah. Made it harder. Well, that's where a so lot of the- So it doesn't bend so well. What was it, what did they used to put in, you used to get that PVC gray stuff there was a copper replacement for the oh, yeah, yeah. And if you come across it, it's like, oh my God, I've got to get oh, fittings, no, isn't it? Yeah, it's yeah. hard to find the fittings for. Servo warm and people yeah. like that used it. Oh yeah, yeah. copper And it went all brittle in the lofts. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, all black acorn stuff. pipe was like that. It just shattered as soon as you touch it. You know bang. what? That was a, I had a job with that on it and that was one of the ones, I was on site with all my mates and we had a leak and it wasn't a leak. It was, I forgot to cap off a joint yeah. and when I was, because I was filling up each night to get the heating running because yeah. it was a conversion. And literally water, I just had a 22 mil pipe and I was just filling the system up and didn't know until just it went up into this out. end of that. Oh, I was just, and I got up, I got up that night at three in the morning and it was in the village and I biked down in the night at three in the morning because I was worried that it might pop. It was just in my head. Yeah, yeah. And I biked down at three in the morning and looked through the window to see if it wasn't just leaking. But that is where, you like, you do end up like that, don't you, you sometimes? Do Can I just, I'll, I'll just yeah. ask you another one, which is, have you got an ultra-sensitive hearing in terms of being a drip? Yeah. You can hear my it My old man anywhere. makes noises, like, we'll be filling the system up, and that's when Dad decides he's going to fill the cat up or something. Oh, Dad, stop it! Yeah, yeah. Stop doing that. I don't want to hear. 
you're, yeah. you're, it's absolutely, I don't know how it happens, uh, whether you're born yeah. like it or you've developed no. it, but your ears get to the point where do you ever sometimes you're lying see in bed at night, you could hear a drip. Do you, do you see them and think, I'm just seeing a drip? Yeah. And you're like, yeah. Where, yeah. where's that? Yeah. I went around to see a mate of mine some years ago, he was ill, you know, he'd got, got some bad thing going on. And uh, I thought, oh, I've got to go around and see him. You know, you're too busy all the time. I thought, I better go yeah. around and see him in case he croaks, you know. <laughs> so I went, you give me something. I went around there and I was going, <laughs> and it's one of those ones, isn't it? Like, how are you, Dave, you know? And he's going to tell you all about his illness and you're thinking, and, um, and we sat there and I said, so how are you, Dave? And, you know, tell me about this illness, you know? And as we sat down like this, just like this, went, Plop, drop of water straight on to me. Oh, God. Oh, no. I looks up, there's water coming through his ceiling. So, big hand at that. I'm, I'm going to go do that. And so, <laughs> I went and fixed his leak in the plumbing. I just so uncanny. Fixed it. I never got to hear how he was. Poor old bloke died the next week, but no, no, he didn't. <laughs> I never got to talk about his He died when you gave him the bill. I thought I'd come out and say how he were, but here you go. That's it. I do you know what I reckon he did. I reckon he had a leak. He thought, well, I'll put the chairs there. I'll call Roger up. Do you want to come around and see me? Yeah. It. And that was it. And he, he, he set me up. The what, what's your thing, actually, on working for friends and family? Oh, it's, it's hard. It's, it? it is hard. It's hard. Yeah. yeah. I, I, mean, I wouldn't yeah. even work for neighbours. You know, because oh, I've got, like, oh, the, everyone around it. my person knew I was a plumber. I used to have it on the van. I don't have it now. Yeah, but, same here. I've done it. And, uh, and, and they would all say, hi, Roger. And I thought, oh, you're chatting away. That's uh, And then it was like two yeah. o'clock in the morning, Sunday lunchtime. Yeah. Oh, What do you do? How I had that charge? Sunday lunchtime. I came round and knocked on my door. said the board has gone wrong. Yeah. It's like Sunday and you're stood here yeah. saying that. Yeah. You know, you're not giving me any opportunity to say, no. to lie to you over the phone and yeah, say, yeah. you know, because let's face it, it's a Sunday, you and should I have know a, what you've got you a did. right to lay down. And, I, and I know what you did. Yeah. You went out. Yeah, uh, no, I didn't actually, did I? I actually stood my ground and said, no, I'm not coming out. Really? I said, it's so rude, I'm not coming around. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, and it I took like you know a couple what? of years I've... seeing him in the pub. He loved it, old boy, I would have gone. You see, I just can't. That was the one time. I'd curse him, but I'd go. You know, my well, wife not, you're too soft, you're too good to these people. But you sometimes, do you ever do those she little, talk like that, those little like, like things where you help someone out and you think at the end of this, if they're like me, if someone comes around and helps me out, like I had my mates come around and help me with some fence posts. Mm. At the end of that, I didn't just say, right then lad, see ya, bye. No. You know, I was like, here you go, yeah. some beers or whatever, yeah, or yeah. I wanna see you down the pub. It's when that happens, I think that's the most annoying thing about some, some mates. I don't really have mates who are bad like this, do we? I can't think of any. Who just leave you to let you walk out. No. I just couldn't do that. No. It'd just be annoying. And also, if I want to ask them to come around and help again, they'll be more ready to do something. Yeah, but also, <laughs> it's just having respect for people, isn't it? I, yeah. just, I wouldn't want to exploit a friend. I just couldn't yeah, do it, you know. It's exactly. Just, it's not on, so no. yeah. But, but charging friends, charging family. I never charge, never charge my family. I never charge yeah. any of my yeah, sisters. No, you know, right. I, no. I always... Well, me, me, my, well, you met Mick when we were in Copenhagen yeah, in I was, February. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Mick's a, a brilliant builder. He's one of these guys, and I hope he's not watching because he'll, he'll, he'll go on about this. But um, we have this thing where he'll come around and do some, he'll come and swing a couple of doors for us uh, or whatever, because he's a chippy by trade. And then he'll go, oh, you're in my debt now, aren't you? Like uh, that. And you know that a couple of months later you'll get, and he does a typical chippy thing, and you must have had this. He'll go, oh, come around, Jimmy, I need a radiator move. And I got there, and he'd got a radiator needed moving, and it was like chasing up a screed floor and putting it in, uh, and a whole bloody bathroom when it first fixed in. Uh, no. And he'll go, he goes, I got you in now, aren't I? Like that, and he just lumps it on. Which is typical builders. That's what they always do. Yeah. They always just lump it on. They get you on site, block your van in. It's like, so, well, you better so do no, it now. So no money's changed hands. Oh no, it's always just jobs one way or the other. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And I sometimes because he's obviously married to my sister. If he's working around my house, I'll hear him going, "Oh, Dawn, why did I marry you? I'm now here swinging these doors and these these bloody linings are out and stuff like that." It's such a funny vote. But there you go. Yeah. Should we go like, to the pub, yeah, do you, yeah. I, I just say about people. I mean, we've had a moan today, haven't we? But, oh, yeah. but when you get on site and you get somebody, I mean, other guy, he was on the blooming comments, you know. Oh, you you shouldn't have moved that cable. You're not qualified electrician. You should have done this. Should have, if anybody ever moved my cable, we couldn't get the blooming bathroom cabinet. There was a box there. I thought we shift it. You know, yeah, yeah. what is it? You know, turn the electricity off. Little screwdriver. I could do it. I, I could. Yeah, no one's house. going to die. Rewiring house, yeah. exactly. And it's all, oh, you know. 
and oh, I'd never do that, and I'd never had this, and it's part P, and it's this, and it's that, and it's that regulation. I'm going, go away, mm. go away. I do not want you on my site. If that's the way you're going to come in and just make everything into yeah. a massive, well, help each other out. A massive problem. You know, I can't do this because of that and this. I'll just go away. Yeah, yeah. No, and that's another. The good thing about site work and also the jobs that we do, we get to meet loads of people. And Emily always says that we'll go around and it's like, I can't believe the amount of people you know yeah, yeah, yeah. through, I mean, obviously sport, but also working on site yeah. and the people you meet in the suppliers, you can walk through town and just see, yeah. you know, I'll loads stop. of people. I'll stop going. Like, All right. I said to my wife, I'm not going to go, sh go shopping in town if she wanted me to go out. I'd say, yeah. we go to the next town because if I went to that town, it's like, oh, you're going to fix my loo. Oh, no, yeah. All these people you're dodging think, oh, I didn't phone them back and yeah. all the rest of it. So well, you always get that as well. If, you, if someone says, what do you do? And I say, I'm a plumber. And they go, who are you? Oh, yeah, I've got, um, it's like saying you're a doctor, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. I suppose, you know. I've got, can I tell you my doctor story? My Go doctor's on, story is really, I used to do LBC at radio, you know. But uh, leading Britain's conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but back in the day uh, when very, LBC. Yeah. But I used to do a thing called the Fix It phone in, you right. know, that was on uh, Saturday morning, you know, and they'd get all kinds of questions, people come in, plumbing questions, all sorts of stuff, you know. And um, they said to me, do you want to do a through the night slot, you know, with uh, Steve Allen, you know, whatever. So I went, through the night, what are you talking about? And they said, they said, no, London's a 24-hour city. There's always people awake in London. You know, it doesn't matter, you know, they're on night shift or whatever. He said, you'll get calls, you know? So I went, well, I'll give it a go. I didn't, you know. So I went in there at night time, you know, with the old thing. I said, right, Roger Bisbee's in for an hour or so, you know. We're doing plumbing, two o'clock in the morning. You know, we're doing, uh, oh, not just plumbing, but anything you've got, DIY, whatever, you know. So I do this little through the night slot. So it was all right. So I do one on Saturday morning, one through the night, midweek. And, and, and you had a lot of phone-ins you know. and stuff like that, people coming on? Sorry? You had a lot of people ringing in? Always. Sort of Never, ever were we short the calls, you yeah. know, which is why we're now doing Ask Skill Builder. Anyway, so yeah. this thing went on, yeah? So then I, I got this little problem with my health. It's not, uh, it sounds like I've always got a problem because I've just been ill, but I didn't. But, <laughs> but it was a small thing. I didn't want to go to the doctor, but I just wanted to check it phone the doctor up and I said, look, I don't want to come in, I don't want to waste your time, just want to check, I've got this, should I do that, should I do this, you know, I'll have to do that, it's fine. Okay, off he goes, you know, no problem. And then um, he pitches up at my house. He just suddenly arrives, you know, like a few hours later after surgery, the doctor's arrived, he comes in, I'll just come and see how you are. Thought, Blimey, this That's is unusual. This is something, but I do his plumbing. Ah, uh, right, yeah. here we go. So I do his yeah, it's so not right it's again, it's the same. Anyway. It's the same thing, yeah. right? So he's got to all oh, right. So I've come yeah. around and seen you to see how you are. But actually... Anyway, so he said to me, he said, so he, he looked me over, took a pulse, did a bit, you know, and everything's fine. And he said to me, he said, I haven't been sleeping well lately. And I thought, hang he on said a minute. You're the, you're the doctor. You're the doctor. Yeah. He said, so he said, I've been, you know, the, the immersion here right? at night. He mate. said, I'm a bit, I see the noise. He said, so, he said, so, in the night when I can't sleep, he said, I'll turn the radio on. And he said, and LBC, he said, and lo and behold, he said, I can hear you. He said, talking about equilibrium ball valves and other stuff. He said, stuff I don't understand anything about. He said, just, he said, and within minutes, he said, I'm sleeping like a baby. <laughs> You should he have said, said to him, I've not been on there. <laughs> and you're imagining things. So he said, he said, so I'm now recommending it to all my patients. <laughs> and with that, he got up and left. And I thought he was just desperate to tell me that. You know, oh, that's the reason he came he out. He came out just say that. Joke, just to go, but yeah. yeah. Thanks, mate. Lovely fella, lovely fella. Yeah. I know, actually, it was good in those days when you could do the doctor's plumbing and get yeah. a bit of an in. You can actually see a doctor then? You, they can't you can now. never see the same doctor now. Yeah. Every time I go to see a doctor now, I'd say, do you need any plumbing doing? Oh, I, I can't what? build a relationship with them. Oh, I, I, I once had a bit of a man scare. Still got it. I can oh, say. No, that's all right. <laughs> I've had them all off. Uh, no, uh, so I went to the doctors. True, Emily? <laughs> no, well, I went to the doctors and a lady doctor came out and she said, um, she said, I just want you to know there's two students in today and I'm sat in a packed doctor's surgery. You know, is this a sensitive yeah. thing? Yeah. I was like, oh, no, no, not at all. Not sensitive at all. <laughs> And I go in there, and there's these two girls, they're like mid-20s or yeah, whatever, yeah. reasonably good looking. Don't worry, all right, before I say anything else. But she said, right, I'm going to leave now, and these, are, these guys are going to do the consultation. You know, I mean, it's bad enough, isn't it, having, a, having that check up, yeah, yeah. you know. So they did it quite well. Yeah. Uh, and then she came back in, and then she said, do you mind if I show them the anatomy of this yeah. and that? Yeah, yeah. 
Well, you can't really say no, can you? So she got me up, propped up on the thing like that, pulling me about, like this is that, that is this, yeah. and all this. There's only one question <laughs> on the tip of everybody's tongue who's watching this now. What? No, I didn't, no, no. Seriously, it's, you think it would happen, but it doesn't. I just hope it would. It, it literally goes back into your body, and, you know, and I was almost yeah. making excuses. It just like, it I was used like, to be big you, once. It's usually bigger than this, no. It's, <laughs> oh, it's cold in here, isn't it? <laughs> Stuff like that. But, yeah, it was awful. Yeah, one of those things, isn't it? Yeah. You just think, oh, why me? Couldn't I just add Mr. Bertram? <laughs> God, now you know which doctors I use. <laughs> Uh, all right, have you ever had your appendix out? It only happens no, once. I don't think. I don't think so. Cool. I went to the doctors five times before they diagnosed me with that. Oh, and you had it, did you? Yeah. Oh, God, it was oh. bad. There's no. There's no ambiguity as to whether you've got it or not. Yeah. You've got it. Yeah. If it pains that bad, oh, mate. Every time anybody drove over a speed bump or whatever, oh, I yelped yeah, on the way. Really? Yeah. Oh, it was bad. I did pick yeah. a guy up off a street once. He was lying there and you know it's one of those things that you see people a young guy lying there drugs drink whatever yeah and everyone's walking past him and everything's there and I, I, I don't know what it was about him i just thought oh you know and i said to him you're all right mate he said oh, I don't. and he had burst appendix yeah and i yeah, managed to get him yeah and, and they, they this was down in cornwall funnily enough and they airlifted him to truro hospital to, yeah. to do the operation on him so so it was you know a good little thing but it's just something about him i just thought you know, and I was going to do the job myself, but I didn't have any tools. Well, we are plumbers. We're probably yeah, I think fairly I, simple. Do you know what? It's all manual trace. I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure and if doctors, I had to. Doctors think they've got it. But, yeah, it's know. a pump, isn't it? Whatever. Yeah. It's a pump. But we're talking about that heart. What is it? Yeah. It's, it's how many valves in and out? Four valves. Yeah. Isn't there? Is there four? We're well, jumping. That's not bad. We're jumping. Do you like doing that? Jumping, snatching. That's oh like yeah, go on. We call dear. it jumping, where we yeah, you call snatching, it snatching, snatching. Yeah. Where yeah. you take the but ball then again, around. I'll snatch, but I'll snatch if I pull the vacuum. Yeah. You know, just know. Like, drain off of the, open the drain off. Once that stops, you're like. But if you've got like 28 mils or something like that, all that takes is one slug of air to get up there, and you're a wet boy, and your uh, day's ruined. Sometimes, what do you do? You know? You've got a basement boiler, yeah. and you've got no drain off. Well, get and Charles out. Go. Charles, the, get Charles the Hoover out. Yeah. That's what I do. Put that yeah. on there and suck it all out. Yeah. You know? But yeah. yeah, put a siphon. Have you ever pulled a siphon on oil line? Like no, suck it through? No, no. Get no. oil in your mouth? Yeah. Some of the life. stuff you do. Do you ever look back and think, bloody hell, yeah. if what I've done for the last 10 years, at minimum or whatever it may be, yeah. isn't going to kill me? PUR board. Insulation. Yeah. Everyone seems to think it's all right, but you blow it, you get it in your snoz cumber, your nose, yeah, sorry, yeah, yeah, down your yeah. throat, in your ears, under your eyelids. I get it everywhere. It's just literally everywhere. And I think, well, that's got to be in my lungs. Wear PPE. I saw you got God's sake. Mask, yeah. yeah, no, I've got my mask. I, I tell you what, I've got my, my goggles, but the, oh, I once got a bit of metal. <gasps> I was grinding. It got oh, under my goggle. No. Got in my eye. Four in the morning, I was in Addenbrooke's, which is the local hospital oh, no, yeah. in A&E. This couple getting off with each other in A&E at four in the morning next to me with a bit of metal in my eye. Very strange. There we go. Your mum took me that night because you wouldn't take me. It was like a magnet job, was it? They put they put a dye in and then they just they 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 make your eye numb and then they sort of just put something in there and pad it out and get it out. Wow. Yeah, it weren't very pleasant. No, no. And it was Halloween, so he gave me. I said to him, "Can I have some of that dye? Because yeah. I'm going to a Halloween party in yeah. a few weeks." Yeah. So he gave me all this dye, and I used it as uh, makeup. So you had the goggles <laughs> on, and you still suffered. Still got thing. it got up there. Now, just, yeah. Now I'll now make sure. Well, no, I'll put them on, but I'll make sure big time I'm like, that's round my nose. It's still round, yeah. Yeah. yeah Do you know, it's one of those things I've always said that you know, you're working away and I'm chipping away and I'm thinking, I should get I my should goggles. Time. I should get my goggles. <laughs> oh, no. They're in the van. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, I've got to climb down the ladder, walk across there, yeah. get them out and put them on. And I'm. Thinking, and you get to the van, you'll be like, why am I here? And I'll just that's carry on chipping away and I'll carry on. I'm going like this, I'm sort of looking or thinking like a big, I can see the, the, the chip come, yeah. close my eye before it gets to my eye, yeah. which sometimes you can do. You can, yeah. But, but, so I'm chipping away and I'm thinking, if somebody said to me, 
how far would you walk to save one of your eyes, you know? Is yeah, right? exactly. Lose yeah, an yeah. Eye. How far would you walk? 10,000 miles, you'd go, absolutely, no problem. Yeah. Right? I'll walk 10,000 miles to save my eye. 20,000 miles, yeah, probably. You know, at that point where you say, no, no, that's too far to go, take my eye out, you wouldn't do it. And yet, walking down, down the ladder, the stairs, across yeah. the garden path, yeah. you can't be asked to do it. Yeah. Just say, how stupid are we? Mm. As people, not just plumbers, but people. Well, yeah, I mean, it, it is amazing how people just can't be asked to wear PPE yeah. and there are some times where it does feel a bit ridiculous it's uncomfortable isn't it well especially this time of year yeah. like if you're up in a loft yeah. you've got say earphones what do you call them uh, ear, ear defenders, defenders yeah. that gloves knee pads all the rest of it yeah. you know goggles and that you almost feel like you're not in the room you're just that's like, right yeah you are well, very disconnected well from... I, I was welding yesterday and but be our welders mitts up to here then you know I usually wear a, a cap backwards because yeah. you get slag yeah. Like, you know, uh, yeah. welded slag, and that lands in your hair. Actually, some of it landed on my trainer and burnt a hole through my trainer. So I should have worn bloody toe detectors and burnt my, my toe. I didn't take. So what, what are you welding then? You're doing your own. I always weld. If I take out um, something like an accumulator, yeah. I'll cut it in half, and then I'll make a barbecue out of it or something. Like that. I have done yeah. a. I've done some naughty ones though. Where, you know, like 13 kg gas bottle. Oh yeah, yeah, I know, yeah. I've had a few of them. Then wood burning stove. Yeah, so. but tell you what, cutting into them is the most nerve wracking thing you can do. Because yeah. even if you, you can't take the lid off, and if you can, take the screw out and then put a hose down to the bottom of it, and fill it up with water, and then you know it's all gone then. Yeah. But I couldn't do that on this one, and I had to drill a hole in the side of it. But I was pouring water over it the whole time, so it wasn't any arcs. But people have died doing that. Oh, did think and you did this it. Is a bit, yeah, exactly the same sort of thing. It's just you know stupid, isn't it? Stupid you just stuff. do stupid stuff. It's stupid stuff. I'm a rock climber. Or oh, was. Not, I don't, yeah, I don't no, do an awful lot. Yeah, you know now, but I, I did do a lot. And a mate of mine, he he discovered this well in a house he was working in, and he said to me, "Is this well?" And he said, like, "And he said there could be treasure down there." I said, "Come on, you was doing them." And he went, "Wow, well, it's going to go." And I went, "All right, I'll come down and have a look." So I took all my climbing gear down there. And we made a little gantry over the top so yeah. that I could lower myself down, abseil down on my rope, down through this well, well, with a torch to the bottom. I got to the top bottom, there was nothing in it's there. It's like the Goonies. There's nothing in there at all. <laughs> He's going, what is it? You only treasure? I go, no, there's nothing there. You know, go, right, I said, right, now I'm coming up. And around the bottom of this well, it's a beautiful brick built well, but around the bottom of it were some stones that all the brickwork was holding on yeah. and they were decomposed. There were just a few of them, like marbles, yeah? And I've got to get up, and you've got to get. When you start going up on the Juma, yeah, it swings, and you. And I'm going. Yeah. Oh my God. If I hit one of them. If I just go it. like that, this whole lot. Will, and I thought, what am I doing there? I didn't tell my wife I was there. And it was Sunday morning, and I got yeah. up to the top, and I thought, never again. Got away with that one. And he's got any treasure? I go, no, there's no treasure. <laughs> You know what? We're our local gym. We've got a climbing wall, and I love doing yeah. uh, climbing and all that as yeah. well. Have you seen Free Solo, the film Free Solo? No. About the Yosemite I know, I know the free guy. climber yeah, dude. Yeah, oh, yeah, mate, yeah. watch that if you yeah, get a chance. Yeah. But um, I accidentally didn't clip on and climbed halfway up this wall and it's got yeah. an auto belay. So you yeah. get to the top and you oh, jump yeah, off. Yeah, yeah. And it was just lucky that I got sort of halfway up and thought, what's that taut rope next to me? And it was it. And it was the one that I was supposed to be clipped onto. Yeah. But it shows, you know, a little... I've done it. I did it in, know, in the peaks. Lapsy concentration. Yeah, that little carabiner and I went through and I got halfway up and the person who was below me said, what's that rope dangling down there? And I realised I'd gone through the little loop rather than the... Just in a rush. But yeah. That's how you do it. But the best one, I was working up in Birmingham for about six months and they got a climbing wall up there, an old foundry, really high, lovely, yeah. lovely place. So I thought I'll go along there. So I was going along there maybe, you know, midweek in just for a little session and uh, climbing on my own because I don't know anybody in Birmingham, you know, I was just going there yeah, doing yeah. a bit of solo in, bit of on the shunt. Young girl, beautiful young girl. And uh, she said to me, are you on your own? You climb on your own? I said, yeah, yeah. She said, do you mind if I climb with you? I went, oh, happy days, you know. So, come uh, in front of me. So, <laughs> so anyway, I said, all right, well, I'll have a go up there. And, and she's, she's got all the gear. She looked, she looked the part, you know, so she's got the belay. So I don't know why, but I thought I'll go through the highest climb in the place, not a little one. No, there's nothing but, to do with the, the fact the, that she the was proper. There. No, I just thought it's an opportunity. She's belay me. I wanted to do this really high stack all the way up a bit of an overhang. So I said, okay, right, we're ready climbing. And up I went and started, you know, and I got up and there was a little greasy hold, nothing really, but I was maybe 10 foot up. 
and I grabbed hold of his hold, been a bit complacent, and I slipped. And as I slipped, she just let the belay run all the way through. <sighs> and um, I landed on the on the ground. I was all right, I was just, you know, a bit. So she, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, it ran through my hands. You know, it just ran through my hands. It like burns it, doesn't it? So, yeah, yeah. So I said, well, no, you've got, you've got to lock it off, you know? So I thought, okay, so. I said, look, I'm going to show you how to belay. And I thought, well, I've got something safe, a little low one that's safe. So I said, OK, right, so this is how you do it. You don't rely on your strength. You just lock it yeah, off lock down it off there. And, and just rely on your body weight. And it won't run, all yeah. right? So she said, yeah, yeah, I've got it. So I said, OK, you're all right, are you? So I climbed up this little wall, which was easy. I'm never going to fall off. It was easy. Got to the top, and I thought, well, you know what it's like. You normally just go off, and they, they run you down, don't yeah, they? Yeah, they yeah, down, yeah. right? And I thought, oh, God, I've got got to launch myself off now, I'm not going to climb back down, you know? Yeah, what if she doesn't do so it right? I said to her, are you okay? You, you got this? She said, yeah, 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 I got it, I got it. I, I won't make the same mistake twice, you're really there, you know? So I went, okay, I'm off, and I went, and I, and I came off, and as I came off, it dragged her hand up into the belay device, yeah? So, so I just pinched that bit of skin into the belay. <gasps> So then she was screaming her head off and everybody had seen me fall and that earlier they went, oh, they're at it again, you know, she's screaming. So I had to get off the thing so somebody could get her hand out from the, the thing and it pinched it really badly. So, so I got back down and I said to her, I think you need to go and have a few lessons. I said, it'd be very nice things, but I said, yeah, I think for, I don't for, want to die today. Basic instruction, but, yeah. but that, and it was a sequel to this story. I'm sorry, I just thought yeah, of the sequel, like right? So, so that was that, right? So I thought, I'm never going to climb with anybody I don't know because that could be really dangerous unless you, you, you're sure of them. Mm. So then I was up in the Lake District. I was working, doing a bit up there, and I thought, oh, a little crafty climb. Went up to Shepherd's Crag, and I'm soloing around on Shepherd's Crag doing a few things, you know? This woman comes along. About 50 years old, and uh, she said to me, "Do you need someone to be like you? You know, you're on your own." I said, "I said very nice of you." I said, "But I've got a policy." I said, "I don't allow people to be like unless I know them because you know I had a bad experience once." She went, "Yeah, yeah." She said, "I understand that," and she pulled her sleeve up, and she said, "I just want to show you one thing," and it was a rope burn around her arm where it, where the rope had run through. Yeah? yeah, all the way around her arm like that, and she said, and it's permanently there. It's a permanent scar, like yeah, yeah. You know, a big tattoo sort of thing. You know, you can see where it's gouged in. And she said, that's where I didn't drop my partner. <laughs> right, they'd obviously in some situation where she just had to hold on, and this thing was burning for her arm, and she still held it because they used to do that before they had yeah, yeah, yeah. relay devices. They would do a it's, kind of a yeah. Like anyway, that. so that's yeah, what true, she did. Yeah. You know, so. So I went, fair play, you've got the job. So then I went up and she belayed me, and then yeah. she dropped me. I'd love to go out and do some of that, actually, like out in the Lake District. It's one yeah. thing climbing on climbing walls, but going up north or finding good yeah. places to actually climb. The Peak District, we yeah. used to go there quite a lot. Yeah. Oh, well, you've one, let, day, we, let me one, day, one day, Dylan, we're going to do James and Roger climbing. We're, we're going yeah. to do all that. James and Roger go climbing. Stuff. That was me and James having a bit of a ramble. I don't know what you've learned from it, probably nothing at all, but I hope you enjoyed it. If you enjoyed it and you learned nothing, then you're halfway there, aren't you? So come back, see us soon. Subscribe to James's channel. He's got loads more subscribers than us, so uh, I think you'll you know, be he doesn't really soon. need them, but uh, let him have it, you know. Give him. And subscribe to us as well if you're not a subscriber, and that way we'll bring you up to date with all the new stuff that's coming up. And there's lots. Should we go pub now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>